Here I'm going to go over some farm equipment, uh, general farm toys. Not always are they things that are powered and big tractors. They can be a simple wheelbarrow or a shovel. If you want to know who your true friends are, show them a shovel. So going over just general equipment, <clears throat> what we may need on the farm. So the first step is appreciate what you have. Uh, it can be easier said than done, but the basics of what you need in part depends on what you already have. So whether it's a small um, rider mower, small tractor, or a larger tractor, even just a walk-behind tiller, um, appreciate what you have because what you're going to need, or what you think you might need, is going to depend on what equipment you already have and what your setup is and how large or small uh, your operation may be. So needs and wants. What do you, do you need it or do you want it? We all look and see the shows, that nice shiny new tractor, uh, but that could be, is that more of a need or is that really a want? Uh, here's the old symbol there for Apple. We all want maybe a new computer, but we all need the actual food and substance. Ideally, being happy is hit right between the needs and the wants. And it can be very hard to decipher in some cases, but sometimes take a step back and uh, really look at the situation. So items worth consideration. So of the farms I've visited and been to, and even my own little um, operation here, what's worth con serious, um, consideration? What should you really look at potentially getting? And these three things kind of keep coming up. Insect netting, a mist blower, and drip irrigation with an injector. And this kind of shows basic of in insect netting, a mist blower, and drip irrigation with an injector. It doesn't show the injector here. But why are these things important? So let's start with the insect netting. Well, insect netting is going to be the wave of the future from what it seems like. Insect pressure is constantly increasing, and it's the only item for insects that has 100% efficiency. Again, assuming it's installed properly. Um, we want to make sure that we're protecting our crop, and especially with those trying to be organic, and not wanting to, or having very limited applications of products that they can apply, a physical barrier is the way to go. Even for some chemical guys, the um, spraying of in in insecticides does work on occasion, but nothing beats insect netting for that true physical barrier. Now, again, there are some things that come with it. There's the setup, there's the make sure it's installed properly, but it does offer 100% effectiveness if it is properly installed. So there's different mesh sizes. So all insect netting is not the same uh, to include certain insects. Again, the larger the insect, the bigger the mesh size you can get away with. Finer mesh should be advised to protect against aphids or other small insects. Here's some aphids, even down the like little thrips. Uh, in some cases, larger mesh is typically less expensive. Not always, but typically less expensive. Uh, it can be used for like squash bugs on cucurbits that transmit yellow vine decline. Um, becoming a major issue in our area. Collared potato beetle. Again, bigger insects, bigger mesh, typically less cost. Aphids very small, typically require smaller mesh sides, and typically more expensive insect netting. So insect netting, more than just a crop cover. Um, highly recommend to be installed um, on all season extenders, such as high tunnels. Uh, do not make a hinge door as it can be left open. So your high tunnel structures, if you have roll-up sides, they're great for airflow. But you may want to be lining that with insect netting to prevent insects from getting um, established there early in the season. Uh, if you're, again, starting in that April or even March uh, time frame, you want to prevent your insects from getting built up there. The reason why I say don't put a hinge door is if you walk in, you might close it, but if someone else walks in, they may leave it open. Leaving it open can allow some insects to escape in, and then they're trapped in a nice, perfect environment. Um, having doors may have, like, um, screens have, like, magnets that keep coming through, and they reattach. That can also be great, and you walk through, and they snap them right back together. Um, something to just have a pipe down. So you got to pick the pipe up to walk in and drop it right down immediately. So you're kind of eliminating the chance of insects kind of sneaking in, but still allowing you access. Physical barrier, this isn't a new idea. It seems like everyone's like, oh, insect netting. Uh, it's been used bird netting from grapes uh, to keep birds out of uh, grape vineyards. Um, same concept. Again, different mesh size, of course, but same basic concept. <clears throat> that physical barrier providing that separation between the crop and the pest. The mist blower is another one. Mist blower can allow for efficient nutrient applications. Bruce's very small droplets of fine mist. It's basically a 
backpack leaf blower with a water tank. The goal is to get the droplets very small, a very high surface area, which can allow them to be spread out more efficiently on the crop. This blower saves time, quick coverage, uh, can provide better coverage over traditional hand pump sprayers, and it can get the top and the bottom of the leaves very quickly. Also means you don't have to be right there at the crop. They can spread pretty far distance um, and still be able to get efficient coverage. This blower allows you to do less product. It's a cost savings. Mine's actually paid for itself. Uh, they are expensive, um, but with the product that I've used a lot less of, I've been able to save costs that way. Um, not to mention the time and labor savings that I've had. So by simply pulling the truck next to the area, going through and spraying, I'm using less product, doing it in less time, and to me now it's completely paid for itself. And still works just fine. These blowers can help avoid the call the lobster arm. Or here our fiddler crab here, where you're constantly one hands always all season pumping the pump sprayer. Um, the mist blower is gas powered, makes it really easy and efficient to go through and start it up and walk down the field. These are two examples. Steel uh, makes two models here. Uh, the downfall though is they can be heavy, but there's two different size options. So the four gallon is here. It weighs 28 pounds empty. And water again, about eight pounds a gallon. You can do the math there. Adds up really quickly. But they have a small two gallon one. It's only 17 pounds, again empty, but you only fit two gallons in it. So it's, it's less weight in that regards. This is basically Steele's Weed Whacker motor, and this is their true leaf blower. Uh, I've used them both. I can say that they both perform, and they both do the same function. Uh, with the four gallon one, it is a much bigger motor. You basically run this one at idle. This one, you have to use the throttle a little bit, but it's more than capable. So if you're someone it's a little bit, something lighter on their back, this would be a great option to, to look at. The other thing I, sh I think most farms should seriously consider is drip irrigation in an injector. So drip tapes allow efficient watering, low evaporation percentage. And the injector, indicated here, allows for precise nutrient application, which allows you to put stuff in the pail here and it's injected right through to the crop. They do require some filters, um, maybe some pressure gauges, some extra plumbing, but it's well worth it in season. Drip tapes come in different thicknesses. If you standardize your rows, uh, the thicker can be more cost effective because you can use it multiple years. There's the 6 mil, which is basically one season use, usually used under plastic. 8 mil, commonly used for vegetable crops, again, about one season use, but a little rougher and tougher. 10 mil can be used in heavy rock areas uh, or overwintering something like a strawberry plant. And the 15 mil allows multiple years use. I will say I've used the 15. <clears throat> I'm using some on my sixth year and it's working out just fine. You do have to take care of it and pull it out of the fields for the winter. Um, it is a little bit of a labor in that sense, but using it year after year makes it so much easier uh, than having to remake all the irrigation lines. Drip tapes, their flow lights and emitter spacings are different. This can determine the amount of feet of tape you could run at once. This takes a little math calculations. I'm not going to bore with a ton of math, but basically you can adjust the tapes or flow rate to match the gallons per minute your equipment can supply. If you've got a lot of water, you can dump a lot of water for, um, irrigate a large field, or you might have a slower kind of flow, and you just have to irrigate less at one time. It just takes a little math calculations. I gave you some examples here. I'm not going to bore you with all the details, uh, but the key part is here, if you're assuming we have a consistent 7 gallons per minute, which is on the low end, uh, the amount of water you want to add per crop is 400 gallons. Your total row feet is... 1500 feet. Well, in this case, if you got the low flow, you could run 3000 feet of drip tape at once. If you get the higher flow, you can only run 1500 drip tapes at once. This one, you'd have to run twice as long, two hours, because it flows less. This one, you can run for less time. So again, it depends on the pump and the area. A lot of companies are very willing to help you out. And while the math may look scary initially, once you kind of dive into the numbers, you can always pause the video and look at it in more detail. It's really not that bad. The injector. This is Dositron. This is a brand name. It allows for a precise amount of liquid to be fertilized to the ir irrigation at a time. These are the ones you might hear off their running and make kind of a click, 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 click sound as they're going through and injecting um, the fertilizer as the water flows by. You can see here valves here. This one's not running or operational. The valves are closed off. So you don't always have to run it through here, but it gives you that option. Injectors, they can be used when needed. They can move to different zones. They make little carts. 
and it can provide a quick fix. So if you're in a situation where you notice a uh, crop's going a little deficient in something, <clears throat> you could wheel this over, here, hook it up to the irrigation line, and go through and fertilize the crop, just what it needs. Uh, a MAZI injector is a less expensive alternative to the dositron type injectors. There's no living parts. They work with the Venturi effect. Um, if you're familiar with carburetors, if you have an old tractor or um, an older car, uh, they have their issues, but the Venturi is basically what's going on with the carburetor. In the case of the MAZI injector here, you can see it's set up very similar to the other one. There's a timer and a, fertil and a filter, I should say, and the fertilizer injector. These do tend to lose some pressure because they're working on the venturi effect, which is passing liquid through a smaller area, causing it to move faster, changing pressures, allowing it to soak um, up the fertilizer here, <clears throat> you do lose some pressure overall. So just again, something to keep in mind for your system. However, just because you can inject fertilizer doesn't mean you should always be doing it. Focus on a few key elements to liquid feed. Um, your soil should do the main feeding. I would say this is a fertilizer stream. Uh, the grower, the farmer who buys the entire cart of every different type of nutrient because they got this fancy new injector and they're spending all this money um, injecting fertilizers because they can. Focus on a few. Your soil should really be prepped and you shouldn't really be going through and having to fertilize with a ton of stuff. Nitrogen's a key one, sometimes potassium too. So wish list for farm equipment. Uh, different for each individual unique farm. You know, everyone has different wish lists. Some some uh, can give us smaller items, larger items, uh, but everyone I know has a wish list. The tried and true. Uh, old is not necessarily outdated. Uh, antique tractors still are around for a reason. They're overbuilt. They're very heavy. Uh, this is a new to me John Deere M that I bought in 1949. Uh, just bought it, just kind of fixed it up a little bit, ran through, runs just fine. Two cylinders, Johnny Popper, uh, and does the job just fine. Uh, no issues. So just because it's old doesn't mean it's outdated. Uh, so don't always think you need the brand new latest and greatest computer technology. This is just a very, very simple system and it works just fine. There's also uh, some tools out there that one does it all, kind of the Swiss Army knife approach. Uh, the BCS, the Troy Built Flex is kind of a new one on the market here. Uh, they lack specialization. They can do it all. Um, if an engine goes down though, everything will stop. And you can only do one task at a time. So just because you know one power base can go through and be a blower, be a snow blower, be a mower, be an air compressor, you can only do one of those at a time. So it's just important to keep that in mind. And if this does fail, <clears throat> all your attachments simply don't work. So again, just another reason for concern. But the advantage is you only have one thing to keep and maintain. So that does make it a lot easier. That typically <clears throat> you're not mowing the lawn and snow blowing at the same time. Uh, so you're only using those one at a time. You take care of that piece of equipment and it can last you a long time. Specialized equipment can allow for quick transitions, be efficient. Here's a plastic mulch layer, here's a potato digger, here's a cultivator. Um, specialized equipment. You know, when you get into certain things, you may, if you're spending a lot of time doing that, you may want to, can justify in that case, going through and researching and buying that one piece of specialized equipment that you may only use one or two times a year, but if it makes it better overall for you, then that's worthwhile. Hey, equipment's a prime example. You have all these different the mower, uh, the tedding, the rake, the baler, all these different specialized pieces of equipment were all needed to produce those nice little square or those large round bales uh, needed for animal feed. Also, you want to make comparisons. Don't get locked into one thing. A lot of farmers think, oh, it's a farm. I need a tractor. Well, in some cases, a skid steer might be better. Uh, here's some, just weighing some of the pros and cons. Look at both sides. You can see here, pros to tractors, good for row crops. Um, long and high design, uh, designed mainly for farming. Not easily maneuverable in tight spaces, though, limiting uh, their lifting power. That's something of concern. Skid steer, very maneuverable, high lift height, good weight capacity, multiple attachment options, but they have very low ground clearance and only front end attachments. No um, kind of three point hitch on the back or something. So, again, pros and cons to everything. Weigh both sides, talk with others, see what they're using. Preventive maintenance is another important aspect. And there's a whole different uh, kind of lecture and um, presentation on maintenance, but this is often I find overlooked. I know it gets busy in season. Checking the oil is important. Checking tires for weathering. 
and grease fittings. I can't stress that one enough. Uh, knowing where they are, knowing what grease it's filled with, having a grease gun, knowing where that's located, just that preventive maintenance, a quick kind of coolant check, tire pressure check, can really save you a lot of time being down uh, in season when you really need a piece of equipment. So just good to check oil. Uh, make sure it's in the low to full range. Is it burning oil? Is it clean oil? You don't want to have a tire go down and grease fittings. You want to be burning out fittings. Uh, quick little maintenance can really save you a lot of time. And lastly, for equipment, I don't want you to forget about hand tools. I want you to think that every farm needs to have a giant tractor. Uh, do not underestimate the need for simple hand tools and the variety of hand tools. Um, a sigh. I can't. I'm amazed that how many people don't have one or know even what one is or have never even used one. Uh, we had a weed whacker go down at one of the jobs I had previously, and they had a scythe sitting on the uh, barn door forever. I don't know how no one's ever touched it. And I grabbed it and cleaned up the area we need to. Uh, it takes a little getting used to. Gotta be careful with them. It's a long blade, but they can be very efficient. Uh, your loppers, your pruning shears, your different types of shovels. Everyone's got their favorite shovel, different lengths. Uh, so don't underestimate the need and the efficiency that hand tools can offer in certain instances. Always have plenty on board, keep them hanged up um, so you don't lose them or forget them in a the field because you don't want to leave one in the field and run it over with something and pop a tire or have other issues. But hand tools for especially smaller operations have a wide variety, keep them organized, and they can make your job a lot easier.